inscribed and then it said what's what are you okay yeah i see the other one 15. good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon, good afternoon. okay so let's remember we need to put on mute so that when i'm just working at the board only the board shows and it doesn't show a blank screen when i go to upload the zooms so if you guys could put yourselves on mute and when i call on you just unmute yourselves okay so if you've been on WebAssign, you've seen that your scores are posted for the exam. I'm gonna try to write you notes about what I took off points for so you know as far as proofs are concerned. Um, I don't know how soon I'll get that done, probably on the weekend. And let's see, what else? So Melinda brought up that, yes, there's a wrong answer. There's a place for, for me as the instructor to send an error report on the question. So I w went ahead and sent that off, Melinda. And so we'll see what happens um, as far as that goes. So, um, um, yes. What does a grade star mean? uh the red star no no i mean a grade as star i mean i look at my web assign i see star for exam two is that it's not your score isn't appearing yeah that's what i'm thinking uh, let me refresh it yeah i can see it <laughs> you just had to refresh it no no i can't see it i don't you know you cannot why. see it can anyone see it I saw mine. I see a score. Hmm. Yeah, I can see mine too. I, can I don't see mine. See mine. Hmm. <laughs> 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 this is a very interesting. <laughs> Let's see. It's discriminating against Guy and Prospero and Melinda and. <laughs> No, oh, mine is showing. Yes. <laughs> Melinda and I think I heard another voice say that, yes, it was working okay. Hmm. Um, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll send you the score. So, okay. <laughs> um, but go to the tab gradebook and see if it's, are you in gradebook or are you in score view? You mean grades? Go to grades? Yeah, so I my screen looks a little bit different. So, Melinda, how did you get to your score? What did you take us through the steps you used? Uh, well, at the top of the page, there are some tabs uh, like home and my assignments and then grades. And when I click on grades, oh, I don't. Uh oh, she lost yeah. her score. Now, now I don't see anything. <laughs> yeah, I grade mine up with like grades that are all scores. Okay. That gives you oh. an exam score. Yeah, there's a raw score link, so I, I do see yeah. it. Okay. So, yeah. I found it. All right. <laughs> so it's under what did you have to put? What did you have to highlight and press, uh -oh. Guy? So you click um, the tab grades, and then there's like in the middle of the screen, it says raw scores. Okay. Very tiny font. You click it, and there's a new window opening. Okay. Right That's there. where I'm seeing it too. Okay. So everybody's good now to be able to find their score. Yep. Going once, going twice. Okay. All right. So we're all on mute now, hopefully. And we left off, we had shown um, the last theorem and we were about to prove uh, theorem 6.2.3, is that correct? Is that where we left off? Correct. 
Okay, we had not proven 6.2.3. Courtney, is that right? Yeah, we okay. left off at 6.2.2 because we proved that one. Okay, so. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to look at serum, blah, 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 theorem 6.2.3, the radius drawn to a tangent at the point of tangency is perpendicular to the tangent at that point. So if we could mute everybody. That's not a very good circle, but it'll do. Um, what we want to say is that Ting Ting, could you put yourself on mute, please? Do we all agree that what we're trying to prove is that OA is perpendicular to AB? Yes. Okay, so proof. Oh, I started out with assume. What type of proof do I do when I start out with assume? Prediction. Yes. So we're going to assume OA is not perpendicular to. A, B. So we're going to construct the perpendicular OC. Okay, so OC is perpendicular to the tangent AB. Does that make sense to everybody? Question on that. Okay, so let's label the point of intersection here, D. Now, what kind of triangle do I have? Triangle OCA is a right triangle, yes? Yes, but it's got two right angles now. Well, it doesn't have two right angles because we're <laughs> assuming that OA is not perpendicular. Okay. okay. Right. So so let's talk about the fact that what do we know about these lengths? So what is OA in this right triangle? Radius. It's radius, yes, but what else is it? In the right triangle OCA, what is it? The hypotenuse. Okay. 
So we know that the hypotenuse is longer side, right? So OC is less than OA. Do we all agree on that? That OC has to be less than OA because OA is the hypotenuse. Looks good. So by segment addition, we have O D plus D C is less than O A. What goes wrong? What is O D, guy? It's a radius, so we get like DC is smaller than zero. Oh, is that a good thing or a bad thing, guy? It's really, really bad. Really, really bad. This leads us to a contradiction of DC is positive. Therefore, what can we conclude? OA is indeed perpendicular to OB, AB. Okay, question on that. So once again, we come back to a uh, proof by contradiction. So that was why it was important earlier on in the semester to look at those proofs because there's no other way to prove this. So let's look at the corollary. Now the corollary says that if we have the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord drawn to the point of tangency is one half of the measure of the intercepted arc. So we have where the cord is the diameter. Where we have the cord intercepts a minor arc. And where we have the cord intercepts a major arc. So let's prove this one first. So case one, case two, and case three. So case one is almost self-evident. Courtney, why is it almost self-evident? You just have to say a little bit. Is Courtney, what just, do you think? Uh, is it just because of the proof we just had? Like this, this is perpendicular, so we know the measure. So this is our angle one each time. Mm -hmm. And we're claiming that measure of angle one is equal to one half the measure of the arc. So what kind of arc do we have, Courtney? 
um, semicircle? Or? Yes, exactly. So this case one is just We know the measure of angle one is equal to 90 degrees, right, by mm -hmm. our previous theorem. And we'll label this AC, we'll put a point out here, B. We know that arc the measure of AC is equal to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle one is equal to one half the measure of arc AC. Everybody good with that? So that one's not too hard to do. Okay, so let's move on to case two. So in case two, what do you think we want to do here? What would be a helpful way of getting that? Let's go ahead and label this as A, B, C. So what do you think we should construct, Montana? Um, we did case one first. So what do we sure. know? We know something about the diameter, right? And what happens if we have the diameter? So we're going to look at calling this other angle two so we know that one and two makes 90 degrees right okay so case two the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 90 degrees the measure of, let's call this D up here, of arc DB plus the measure of arc BA Since it's a semicircle, Montana, how much is that going to be? The measure of, so we added these two together. That's by our arc addition. So the total degree measure is going to be what? Catherine. I'm sorry, I can't hear you at all. You're breaking up. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Montana. That's what I figured. That's why I called on somebody else because I know sometimes you struggle with the connection. So Catherine, what is gonna be the measure of that? 180 degrees. Okay. Now I'm gonna take half of this. Everybody good with that? So by transitivity, I have the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two 
is equal to one half the measure of arc db plus one half the measure of arc ba. What do we know about the measure of angle two? since it's an inscribed angle. Nigel, what do we know about the measure of angle two since it's an inscribed angle? Uh, it's equal to, is it D, B? It's one half the measure. Remember your inscribed angle is one half the measure of the, intercepted arc okay so that says that this expression and this expression are the same so we now have the measure of angle one is equal to one half the measure of arc ba the intercepted arc all right so melinda what about this case three? How do you think we're going to prove that? Well, I wonder if we should construct a diameter again uh, that we know would be perpendicular to the tangent and okay. then add the angles instead of subtract them. Or, well, you, we, you have two things getting added together. Right. But we could also. extend the tangent line. There's a reason why we did this as case three. What's true about, so we'll have A, B, D, we'll call this C over here. So what do we know about angle one and angle Two. I'm going to label this little piece as angle two. We just showed out showed how to discover the measurement of angle two from case two. Exactly. So we know that that's half of the measure of arc AC, and we know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to one hundred. 80 degrees. We also know that the measure of arc AC plus the measure of arc CDB is equal to 360. If we half that like we did this, we get 180. Then we can do the same thing. So we can do it your way, Melinda. That, that's an okay way to do it. But we can use our previous case to push this one through as well. Yeah, that's handy since we just showed it. Right. So we have the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is going to be 180 degrees. We have the measure of arc AC plus CDB, the measure of arc CDB. So be careful in these proofs, if you are looking at the entire circle, you need to have one of the arcs with a third point in it so that you can distinguish between the two arcs. Does that make sense to everybody? And typically the third point goes in the major arc. The minor arc just stays with the two letters. So we know that that's equal to 360. And we have the 180 degrees here. The CDA and the AC.
do I have to do the rest of the steps or is everybody good with how this proof would continue? Question on that. I think I'm okay with it. So the measure of angle two is, we know is half of the measure of arc AC by case two. So that puts the measure of angle one being one half the measure of arc CDA. All right, so now we get to look at our next theorem, 6.2.5. 6.2.5 says the measure of an angle formed when two secants intersect at a point outside the circle is one half the difference of the measures of the two intercepted arcs. So we have two secants and they intersect at a point outside the circle. We'll call the point outside the circle P. We'll label intersection points A, B, C, D. And this is our angle one. We'll label the measure of arc AD as K degrees and the measure of arc BC as J degrees. We want to prove the measure of angle one is equal to one half the difference of these two arcs the measure of these two arcs. Okay, so now we want to be a little bit careful here. We've been doing diameters, but this time we don't want to do a diameter. Our construction this time is we want to construct the chord AC. So we're constructing chord AC. Now, We've constructed a triangle. If we look at that triangle, we can see that we have angle one, we have an inscribed angle, which I'm gonna call angle two, and we have another angle over here, which is inscribed angle three. Ting Ting, what's the relationship between the measure of angle three, the measure of angle two, and the measure of angle one? Measure three equal, equal to measure one plus measure two, angle two. Why? Uh, um, uh, uh, angle three is the exterior angle of exactly. ACP. Okay, so the measure of angle three, according to this, Sefi, what do we know about the measure of angle three since it's an inscribed 
angle. It's one half of arc AD. Which is K degrees, so we can put in the K degrees right away. Okay. We're interested in finding the measure of angle one, so we're going to leave angle one in there. And what, Courtney, what about the measure of angle two? One half J degrees. Okay. Now I'm not putting down the reasons. I'm assuming everybody knows that this is because of, so this was, Ting Ting told us this is the exterior angle theorem. This is because of our theorem about inscribed angles. And now we can say that the measure of angle one is equal to one half K degrees minus J degrees by algebra. Question on this proof. So next up, we have theorem 6.2.6. .6. If an angle is formed by a secant and a tangent that intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle is one half the difference of the measures of the two intercepted arcs. So in this case, once again, we're asked to prove that the measure of angle one is equal to one half K degrees minus J degrees. So, what construction would you suggest, Catherine? Part AB. Okay. And once again, I'm going to label this angle two and this angle three, so we don't have alphabet soup going on here. And we'll use Ting Ting's suggestion from before, which says that the measure of angle three is equal to the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. So we constructed chord AB. We're using exterior angle theorem again. The measure of angle three is equal to the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. Now the measure of angle three is equal to one half K degrees by the inscribed angle theorem. But the measure of angle two, where does that come from? Melinda, that's not, going to be an inscribed angle. How is the measure of angle two equal to one half J degrees? 
Okay, we just showed that in um, uh, let me get the theorem number. <laughs> uh, was it from corollary 6.2.4? Right, exactly. So we have that this is going to be one half J degrees because it is what you can say is chord tangent. So I would give us a reason here. Okay, so that you don't have to remember the corollary number. Core tangent equals one half intercepted arc, and there we have the proof. Okay, so I think we'll stop here because the next proof is, uh, let's see, the next proof is kind of long. So we're going to stop it here. We'll prove that last theorem, and then on Friday, we'll start proving. Notice below each of the diagrams at the bottom of your page for 6.2, there are ratios of lengths of line segments. So we'll go ahead and prove that all of those are true, the relationships between those line segments. Now. We're talking about possibly ratios. What have we done race recently that had ratios involved in them? We compared, uh, we said that lengths of similar triangles were in proportion, and we've also looked at exactly uh, the That's legs what, and hypotenuses of right triangles. Right. So we're going to be doing those similar, tri we're going to be creating similar triangles. So that's how we're going to be proving some of those statements that have to do with the segments. All right, that's it for today. Uh, your assignment isn't due until tomorrow night, okay? Um, and we'll finish up this page and start the page that I sent out earlier today on Friday. Okay, have a great evening and see you on Friday. I, you. I have a question. Thank you. Yes, Guy. Uh, are we going to have exam three or just final? Yeah, we're going to have exam three and then we'll talk about final after that. Okay. Exam three is going to cover this material. So I'm debating. I, I have, it depends how quickly I can talk on Friday. <laughs> so Guy asked lots of questions. And so, depending on how that goes, we'll figure out what's going to happen with exams. Okay, Guy? Yep. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Have a great evening. Thanks, you too. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.